my name is Mariam Musa, and I'm. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll uh, present you today my thesis I've been working on for the uh, past five years, and it's about exploring biobase and biodegradable polymers, the polymerization, the free radical polymerization, the um, the hydrolysis, and some applications. Uh, plastics uh, have been around in uh, in our lives for so long, and they have helped us to shape uh, our society because of many reasons, such as uh, their lightweight, their durability, uh, cost efficiency, and um, energy saving and permeability. And almost half of the of these plastic materials are um, are based on polymers that are synthesized by free radical polymerization, where we get a carbon-carbon bond uh, in the polymer chain. And this method has been uh, very popular uh, because of a uh, few reasons, and one of them is the, um, the wide range of uh, monomers that, is, uh, that can be used uh, in, this, in this polymerization, and also the high uh, molecular weight that is usually associated with free radical polymerization. And also, as uh, Professor Agarwal mentioned, we produce a lot of plastics um, every year, around 400 million tons, and this number is still increasing. However, there's only um, around 1% of these plastics that are produced is uh, bio-based, and a huge amount uh, end up in the ocean uh, every, or, or in the environment every, uh, every year. But why, why this is a, a problem? Uh, for the, for the fossil-based plastics, is because the uh, sources that we are using to produce those huge amount of plastics are uh, limited, and also because of the, um, the processes that are used to uh, both extract these sources and to synthesize um, uh, further uh, polymerization is uh, usually harmful. Um, and also they contribute to uh, gas uh, to greenhouse gas uh, emissions for the uh, for the um, most of these plastics that end up in the environment they are uh, non degradable and since they are non not degradable they will accumulate eventually in the environment and uh, later on they bioaccumulate in the uh, in the living organisms and what type of plastics are uh, disposed in uh, in uh, nature? Uh, there are a few uh, few types, and some of them are uh, the short the, the plastics that are used in short term uses, such as disposable plastics, and those uh, end up in the nature mostly because of uh, bad behavior of uh, human beings. But there are also uh, applications where plastics end up in the environment. Um, uh, I mean, we can't really control their uh, disposal in their mind because of their. Um, they could be used in, for example, medical applications or uh, in personal care products. And usually, those uh, plastics they will eventually degrade over a very long time uh, period of time, but uh, they will also uh, form microplastics, which we all have heard of <laughs> at some point, and they are usually uh, toxic. So how do we uh, solve this uh, issue? Um, once again, as uh, Professor Agar mentioned, there are a few ways to uh, mitigate this problem, and um, and one of them, which is probably the uh, the method that is um, uh, that will probably keep the plastics in um, like a circular um, use of plastics, is recycling. But however, we can't really uh, recycle plastics as or polymers as much as possible because they will lose uh, properties. Uh, their um, their um, they will uh, the properties will change, and then we can't really use them for the same uh, intended use in the beginning. Uh, so, for designing new plastics, we uh, could consider using bio-based um, sources and also. We need to think about biodegradability of the of the of the material if they end up in in the environment. Uh, there are other challenges uh, with these 
uh, with these uh, methods or these um, uh, yeah uh, of using biobase and biodegradable and for using biobased plastic we have we have as i mentioned earlier we have produced plastic for so uh, many years so we already established or uh, developed um, or methods or processes for um, uh, for synthesizing plastics so if we want to transform, um, do a quick transformation, it's going to take a long time because uh, we have already existing infrastructure that is suitable for certain type of, um, of plus or um, uh, for the fossil-based uh, sources. And that can, of course, be this transformation can also be costly, and the uh, bio-based raw material uh, extraction can also um, can. It's different, so we need to do more research uh, regarding that as well. Uh, for the biodegradable plastics, there are already a um, few existing examples of uh, biodegradable plastics, and, uh, but there are also some uh, issues with that, and that's usually they are, uh, the, they are structurally limited, and the, um, some of the polymerization method could be uh, demanding the, um, the, um, the process of synthesizing these. Polymers. So there are a uh, few uh, bio-based platforms, so-called platform chemicals, and platform chemical is, um, is a chemical compound that is usually used as an intermediate to synthesize, uh, to be further uh, used in synthesizing other valuable uh, chemicals. Um, and there are already a few of them that have been, uh, that have been um, used in literature. But we w uh, want to focus on uh, itaconic acid, and this uh, chemical is usually um, synthesized by fermentation of carbohydrates. And then we also focus on uh, levolinic acid, uh, which can be extracted from lignocellulosic biomass. And both of these, uh, by both of these platform chemicals, um, can be used as uh, they are because of the. They're interesting structures, and they, they have different functional groups that could be uh, used both as polymerization and uh, in, uh, but mostly, uh, most important, that they could be used in um, synthesizing other valuable uh, chemicals. Um, and two of these uh, compounds that we have been focusing on uh, when it comes to bio-based bio-based platform, and those are these two lactones, the uh, alpha-methylene-gamma-butyrolactone and alpha-methylene-gamma-valerolactone. And both of them are uh, five-membered uh, uh, cyclic monomers, monomers with an exocyclic double bond. And the reason why they are uh, interesting is because, uh, because of their structural similarity to uh, the, uh, the popular acrylate uh, monomer. Um, so they can uh, be a good biobase alternative uh, instead of using uh, these ones. Another interesting um, property of these uh, two monomers is that the uh, glass transition, trans transition temperatures of the homopolymers of those are uh, much higher than uh, methyl acrylate and methyl methacrylate. Uh, which give them a uh, which um, which is interesting because that could be used in applications where um, higher temperatures are required. <coughs> For biodegradable um, polymers, uh, we uh, measured or the polyesters or uh, biodegradable uh, polymers. Uh, uh, there is one way of uh, synthesizing biodegradable polymers, and that is uh, using. Uh, radical ring opening polymerization and the reason why this uh, method is um, uh, is an uh, is an interesting uh, approach to um, to synthesize biodegradable polymers and that is because of the use of radical uh, radical uh, polymerization uh, which usually has mild and robust synthesis conditions and also the possibility of insertion uh, then uh, it combines the advantage of the radical polymerization and also the ring opening polymerization as we can get heteroatoms in the polymer uh, backbone. And um, also it's, um, there it's possible to uh, use um, 
to obtain polyesters, for example, in heterogeneous uh, system, polymerization systems. And also, we can uh, copolymerize these uh, monomers with uh, other uh, binary monomers to uh, create high diverse uh, or structurally high diverse polymer structures. And there are a few uh, families of monomers that are used in, uh, in this type of polymerization method. Uh, and uh, these are cyclic ketene acetals, tyranolactones, and some macrocyclic um, monomers. And there are other uh, families as well. The one that we focus on in this work is the cyclic ketene acetals. Uh, and those, uh, when they are polymerized, then we can get a polyester functionality in the backbone. Um, however, it has uh, a couple of challenges, and that is they're sensitive, they are very sensitive to uh, hydrolysis in water. Um, and also, uh, their, their, their synthesis method is quite demanding, so we, there's not much, they're not uh, commercially available, or only one so far that is commercially available. So, in this work, we have uh, divided the work into uh, bio-based polymers and biodegradable polymers using free radical polymerization. And we have used these, uh, the, these monomers, the, the five-membered lactones and the cyclic ketene acetals, to be uh, polymerized both in, um, in homogeneous systems and in heterogeneous systems. And in the first project, we used the uh, lactones to form bio-based uh, polymers. So we, sin we copolymerized uh, the lactones. We did the homopolymerization of the lactones and also copolymerization with other, uh, with the, those uh, methyl acrylate monomers to um, obtain both homopolymers and copolymers, and then we compared the properties of, the, uh, of those um, polymers. And what we saw that uh, the um, reactivity of these uh, four monomers that we've used, the methyl acrylate, the MBL, methyl MBL, and MMA, they differ uh, quite a lot, uh, even though they, have, they are uh, structurally similar. Um, so we see that the methyl acrylate uh, is much uh, reactive, and then, the, um, and then we see that the, uh, the rings are more reactive than the methyl methacrylate, and that's due to the, uh, the ring structure of the of the monomers uh, that contribute to the different uh, reactivities. And this is, uh, this is important to keep in mind as their reactivity, uh, I mean, we usually do copolymerization in, in most materials and uh, once we react, uh, do a copolymerization, we need to think about the reactivity as they can give, uh, they can get different uh, chemical structures and that will affect the properties, uh, the final properties of the polymer. And once we uh, copolymerized, uh, is an example of one of the uh, some of, uh, of some of, of one of the copolymers, and that is the uh, copolymerization of methyl MBL and uh, MMA. And when we copolymerized these, we uh, saw that the TG uh, of the copolymers they end up in the in the in between the TG of the homopolymers, um, and that that TG can be tailored depending on the monomer ratio in the uh, in the copolymer, but they also um, contributed to the thermal stability or, or increased thermal stability of the of the copolymers, as we see here um, in the thermogram to the right. Uh, we see here the uh, the TGA, the thermal degradation of uh, polymethyl methacrylate, that it has this characteristic three-step uh, uh, <coughs> degradation, and once we incorporate uh, uh, methyl MBL in the in the copolymer, these two steps um, uh, decreases, and those two steps um, are a result of the degradation of uh, some of the uh, some of the parts in the polymer chain. When the MMA, the, uh, depending on how the MMA uh, is, the carbonyl or the yeah the carbonyl of the MMA is um, is <coughs> if it's pointing towards each other, or if they are sitting head to head or tail to tail. And, um, and the other degradation step is due to the termination of the, of the polymers. And we see that these two steps then uh, almost disappear when we incorporate the 
lactone. So to conclude this part, uh, we uh, saw that the reactivity uh, ratios of the monomers are important to consider when we polymerize, when we synthesize new polymers, and the thermal stability uh, and the uh, or the thermal behavior in, in general can be tailored depending on the um, amount of each monomer that we uh, incorporate in the copolymer. And that uh, makes it possible to synthesize biobased and uh, also partially biobased uh, polymers. For the second uh, part of the, uh, of the thesis, we worked on uh, the same lactones, uh, but in, suspension, in free radical suspension polymerization to form uh, biobased thermally expandable microspheres. But what is uh, thermally expandable uh, microspheres? These are particles in the size of uh, 5 to 50 uh, micrometers, and they contain a, a thermoplastic, or they um, consist of a thermoplastic shell that encapsulate a hydrocarbon, and those are th synthesized by um, suspension polymerization mentioned earlier. And and I have a, an example here of those are those bottles contain the same amount of the particles, but those are <coughs> expanded particles, and we could see that's how uh, the volume increases. So I don't know if you can see how uh, little there is here, but once it's expanded, they, um, they, yeah, the volume increases of the, of the particles. And that is um, when, the, when, the, um, when we heat those particles to a Tg close to the Tg of the, of the, of the polymeric shell, then we uh, end that together with the increasing the internal pressure of the hydrocarbon that's encapsulated, the plastic, the, 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 the shell will uh, soften and then um, we uh, get an expansion of the particle. And once the, the temperature uh, decreases, the, the shell will stiffen and then uh, it will stay in the expanded, expanded form. And that is, um, they have interesting properties because they contribute to, um, we can get material that's much lighter in weight, and that could be used in uh, many applications, such as shoe soles, uh, wine corks, and also uh, wallpapers and other uh, applications. So in this project, we use the, uh, the bio-based lactone uh, together with acryl nitrile and and compromise together with acryl nitrile and uh, MMA. And to synthesize these uh, particles, we have a mixture of, uh, in suspension polymerization, we have a mixture of uh, an organic phase and a water phase, where the organic phase contains the monomers, the initiator, uh, the crosslinker, and the hydrocarbon. And the water phase contains a stabilizer. Um, and once those are uh, mixed, um, with a high shear mixer, then we the particles will form, and they are stable, and they are stabilized by the uh, stabilizer. And since all the all the uh, reagents needed for the polymers are inside the monomer dro droplets, the the monomer droplets would act as a bulk polymerization, a mini bulk polymerization. And once we uh, yeah, once we heat the mixture, the polymerization will occur, and then we uh, get the particles. From uh, when we looked at the uh, properties of these particles, we saw that we got uh, good expansions depending on the ratios of the different monomers, uh, and we saw that acryl nitrile contribute to the uh, to the best expansion because of its um, excellent barrier properties. But we also saw that we got uh, actually core shell particles when we look at the SEM images here. So this is a SEM image of the um, particle surface, and then this is the cross-section where we see the particles are hollow. And then, uh, and then if we look at the expansion here, uh, we see a, um, a, yeah, a significant difference in the expansion uh, temperature. As we see here in the expansion, in the, um, uh, the, yeah, the purple or the pink uh, graph here, that um, those are particles uh, where the shells contain acryl nitrile and uh, MMA, and they expand at around 120. And then once we incorporate the, the lactone, which has uh, which 
as polymer uh, has a high TG, then it's also contribute to a high TG of the polymeric shell, and therefore we get a higher expansion temperature. Another interesting uh, property when using when we used uh, the slack tone is that uh, after looking at the the hydrocarbon content after storing the particles in uh, in yeah at room temperature for nine months we saw that uh, the hydrocarbon um, content in the uh, particles containing uh, only um, a methyl MBL in the polymer shell and the ones that are polymerized with acryl nitrile where the we saw that the hydrocarbon content didn't change uh, that much while in the ones that uh, where we use methyl uh, methacrylate uh, we saw that the hydrocarbon content decreases when we increase the methyl methacrylate uh, con um, content in the polymer shell uh, and that could uh, suggest that um, methyl MBL could have contributed to the better uh, barrier properties of the, the particles. To conclude uh, this part, uh, we managed to increase uh, the bio-based content in the thermally expandable microspheres, and that uh, not, uh, is not only that we, uh, the incorporation of uh, methyl MBL not only contributed to a, a bio-based uh, shell, but also um, increasing ex expansion temperature. Um, and we saw that uh, then the, the monomers has a uh, potential to be used in a, uh, or design a advanced application uh, or polymers for advanced applications. And moving on for the fourth project, uh, and now we go to the degradable polymers uh, part where we used CKA as the main uh, monomer. So for the first project in um, using a homogeneous system, we uh, looked at the, uh, both the synthesis of the CKAs, the polymerization, and also the hydrolysis, and how the structure of the polymers affect the hydrolysis and, degrada or, uh, and biodegradation. And we have used, um, yeah, so in the synthesis part, we have uh, this uh, first synthesis route here, route here for the um, synthesis of um, the Roma acetal intermediate. When we followed the uh, literature um, protocols, we got uh, quite low yield. Uh, so we improved the synthesis and we went through the bromosuccinamide and ethyl, ethyl vinyl ether to uh, form the Roma acetal intermediate, where we got a, a higher um, yield of the intermediate. And for the last part, where we formed the monomer, we uh, followed the, um, the yeah, we um, synthesized by removing uh, dehalogenation of the uh, of the bromoacetal to form the double bond. What's interesting about those um, when using a radic radical ring opening polymerization uh, with uh, these monomers is that we get. A, uh, depending on the structure uh, of the monomer, we can get, um, for example, here we can get a primary uh, radical. What's in, what's it? Uh, the monomer is attacked by uh, and by the initiator or the radical uh, initiator, and this radical here is quite reactive, and once um, and it would rather move to a site where it's more stable. So we, in those type of polymerization, we usually get a backbiting, as uh, the radical here will do a hydrogen <coughs> abstraction from the from a proton in the in the polymer chain, uh, and by that we can get a branched uh, polyester. Uh, as we can see here, the the repeating unit of the polymer is very similar to polycaprolactone, but once we have the branching. Uh, that will affect the properties um, a lot, as uh, the branching will uh, cause a polymer to uh, be um, more uh, amorphous compared to the semicrystalline uh, polycaprolactone. And when we polymerized this uh, CKA, the one that contains the methyl substituent, uh, the polymerization, uh, the polymerization. Um, um, mechanism can 
can go th um, can take through uh, two uh, hmm, can take two uh, there are two ways of polarizing this uh, of this uh, this monomer uh, and that's depending on where the ring will uh, open here and uh, since we already discussed earlier that the radical the primary radical uh, would rather to uh, would rather move to a uh, to more stable side then the once we introduce this methyl uh, substituent here, we will get a secondary radical that is much more stable. And this uh, polymerization method uh, route here will be the most dominant one in the, uh, in the polymerization outcome. All of these, uh, the structural differences, uh, we try to study their effect on the degradation of those polymers, as that's what we uh, want to use. Um, that's what, like the the, the point of of um, of uh, having biodegrad uh, or degradable polymers to look at their degradation in, in the environment and in uh, lab conditions. So we looked both at the hydrolysis of the of the polymers, and we then we compared the the um, polymethyl MDO, the one uh, the polymer that is. Pol that could be synthesized from the cyclic ketene acetal that contains a methyl substituent, the commercial uh, polycaprolactone, and two, uh, two, methyl, two polymethyl MDO, which has two different uh, branching degree. Um, and then the hydrolysis part, we uh, dissolved the polymers in THF, and then we um, reacted with an alkaline um, in, yeah, in lab conditions. Uh, and we looked, we followed the degree of hydrolysis, and we saw that the polycaprolactone, the commercial polymer, it hydrolyzes uh, fast, the fastest. And once we increase the um, the branching degree on the uh, methyl MDO, we saw that the hydro degree of hydrolysis decreases a little bit, while the polymer that had the most effect on the uh, on the uh, degree of hydrolysis is the one that contains the methyl uh, substituent. Um, and that could be because of the, uh, the um, steric hindrance that those, uh, the branches and the, and the methyl substituent that contribute to the, um, so that the, the, alk the base wouldn't find the ester functionality as, as easier. We also did a biodegradation study in collaboration with uh, Norion in the Netherlands, uh, where they helped us in uh, in uh, doing the polymerization study by uh, the sorry the biodegradation study by um, mixing the polymers with uh, with river water to simulate how the those how how those polymers will degrade in in the environment, and we saw that um, um, to, to to consider a for a polymer to be considered uh, readily biodegradable, uh, it has to reach a 60% biodegradability within uh, 28 uh, days. And uh, from this uh, from this study, we wanted to see the differences, uh, how how those branches will affect and the substituent will affect the uh, will affect the, um, the degradation. Uh, but we couldn't really see. Um, a big difference between the, the polymers that contain branches and the polycaprolactone. However, the uh, polymer with the methyl substituent um, decreased the uh, biodegradation uh, degree uh, significantly. To conclude uh, this part, we, uh, we uh, synthesized CKA with an, we developed a new efficient uh, synthesis method for uh, the CKAs. We also saw that the Properties of poly uh, or yeah polycaprolactones can be tuned by uh, adding branching to the to the um, to the polymer chain, um, and uh, it's important to study uh, or study the effect of the of the branches and the side groups uh, or the the polymer structure in general to see how this will affect the degradation uh, and see what we what type of uh, degradation. Um, degradation um, um, compounds that we get and how they are, if they are harmful or not in the, for the environment. And for the last part uh, of this thesis, we looked at the 
uh, we are still in the uh, CK um, part, but this time we uh, try to uh, use the cyclocatein acetal to polymerize it in suspension polymerization uh, to make micro capsules. And here uh, we use we use the same method uh, when uh, as we synthesize the thermally expandable microspheres by mixing organic phase and a water phase that is stabilized by a stabilizer, and then we um, uh, we heated it to get the polymer uh, droplets. And in this part, we used uh, MDO, uh, the cyclocatein acetal that we used in the previous study, and we also used uh, the BMDO, which is uh, another type of cyclocatein acetal that has a um, that has a um, uh, aromatic ring uh, that will give an aromatic ring in the polymer uh, backbone, and we polymerize them together with acryl nitrile and vinyl acetate. Um, the advantage of using CKAs uh, mentioned earlier in in the suspension polymerization is that we can get a uh, heteroatoms in the polymer uh, backbone. However, there are challenges, as that CKA can hydrolyze as easily in, in water, and we are using water for suspension polymerization. And also, uh, usually, these polymers have um, a quite have low uh, reactivity when, when we copolymerize them. So we really need to think about what type of comonomers to use uh, to make to get the best incorporation of the uh, of the heteroatoms in the backbone. And uh, to confirm whether we got any, um, whether we got any um, um, ester functionality in the or any of the CKA uh, groups in the in the polymer chain, we looked. Uh, we used the NMR to study the structure. Um, and in this case, I'm um, uh, yeah I'm talking about BMDO, the case of BMDO, and in the first. NMR spectra here is the NMR of the particles after being um, after we dry them after polymerization, and then the second one is the NMR uh, spectra of the uh, of the particles that has been uh, dissolved and washed to remove any small molecular weight uh, compounds that could disturb the uh, NMR spectra, and the last one is uh, NMR spectra of the hydrolyzed uh, BMDO, as we uh, mentioned earlier, that they are very sensitive for us, so we wanted to see whether we got the hydrolyzed uh, BMDO or uh, is it actually the incorporated in the polymer chain. And uh, we see here that we have the aromatic rings in the particles, and once we wash any small molecular uh, weight, um, when we wash out any uh, smaller molecular weight compounds, we still have the aromatic rings. But that couldn't really uh, verify with which, uh, whether it's actually uh, inside the uh, in the polymer backbone or is just encapsulated inside the particle. But what well, we could see a, a um, an interesting effect of the uh, BMDO, especially the BMDO in the when we make it, when we have it in the polymerization system, is that uh, when we look at the conversion uh, of the of uh, acryl nitrile and vanilla acetate using uh, in the reference uh, part where we don't have any CKAs and then in the uh, in the um, in the trials where we have MDO we see that the um, the conversion of vanilla acetate didn't change that much uh, however when we look at the um, the uh, conversion of vanyl acetate when BMDO was used in the system. We saw that that decreases uh, significantly. One idea of, uh, on one reason could be is that uh, the uh, BMDO is more hydrophobic uh, compared to uh, MDO, and that uh, could have made it that um, the, uh, the BMDO would rather migrate inside the, inside the um, monomer droplet than being in the in the water phase uh, and once it's uh, since it has low uh, reactivity once maybe it has um, a radical that has attacked the BMD uh, the BMDO uh, could make it um, 
yeah, that the radical is there, but it's not really reacting further uh, with the vanilla acetate. So to conclude uh, this part, we saw that uh, BMDO contributed to differences in the in the polymerization system, um, but we couldn't really verify whether it's a part of the polymer backbone or it's just an encapsulated in the particle. And that um, uh, tells us that uh, we need a, a more suitable system to suppress the hydrolysis of CKAs in, uh, when polymerizing in heterogeneous systems. And to conclude uh, the, uh, the whole work, uh, we looked at uh, the reactivity of different um, vinyl uh, monomers, uh, both biobase and phosphobase polymers, and we saw that uh, the reactivity changes, and it's important to keep in mind when designing new, uh, new polymers. And the biobased uh, lactone that we used in the second project with thermally expandable microspheres, that uh, they um, provide new possibilities to, um, to tailor properties of the thermally expandable microspheres. And we uh, managed to improve the synthesis of CKAs uh, to make them more uh, accessible uh, and use them even more in, in, the, in the radical ring of implantation. We saw that the structure of the uh, biodegradable polymer or degradable polymer are important to consider when designing new, uh, new polymers. And for uh, future work, um, increasing uh, bio-based content in the uh, thermally expandable microspheres um, are important, but we need to think about uh, to improve it even more so it doesn't um, so it doesn't um, so we can keep the same properties uh, as the ones that we have already from the fossil-based <coughs> particles. We also need to think about, um, uh, or we need more research into synthesizing completely bio-based uh, particles and not only uh, focusing on the polymeric shell. Uh, and also further improvement of uh, CKs um, synthesis uh, can be um, important to make them even more uh, available. And also, um, it's interesting to look into other type of uh, monomers that work in the same way as CKAs by using radi free radical polymerization, um, and that they cannot, they won't hydrolyze as easily in in water. And yes, uh, with that, I would like to um, start by thanking the uh, funding um, agency and also the. Uh, the funding agency, uh, Swedish Foundation for uh, Strategic Research, and also Norion for the financial support during this project. But most importantly, I'd like to thank all my supervisors uh, for your guidance and support during this uh, journey, and also all my uh, collaborators and co-authors, and all my colleagues in the division of um, coding technology. And thank you all for uh, your attention.